What's going on, guys? Welcome to a championship edition of La Liga Insiders. Gemma Soler, Rodrigo Faiz, Christina Alexander. We officially have a crown owner football club. Barcelona stays with the title. Sing it, guys. We are the champions, my friend. And uh, Real Madrid, well, they're thinking of Man City. They still have a chance to sing that song, too. And what's new with our insiders? A little bit of extra time as well. We can't leave that aside. We're going to have a little bit of fun because that's what it's all about. Unless you're a, a Madrid fan watching us or an Atletico de Madrid fan or uh, not a Barcelona fan. Let's just put it like that. But uh, it happened. And what we expected, at least uh, in the final part of the season, is to see Barcelona, of course, with the title. Maybe before the season, it was a different prediction. But they did the job and they got it done against Espanol. Uh, Gemma, you were there and I want to start off with you, of course, because you followed Barcelona throughout the season. You know this club inside and out. Um, but I want to ask how you are after the craziness that we all saw, of course, transpired before, during and after the match. Hola, Chris, Rodri. I'm okay. I'm okay. We will be talking a bit later on how crazy was this uh, end of uh, La Liga, the celebration, the clinching of the Barcelona uh, to the La Liga title. Um, but yeah, it's been uh, it's been a great season. Uh, I think it's been a pretty good uh, season. Very interesting of Barcelona. This new project uh, orchestrated by by Xavi. Um, a new project, a young project, I think it needs uh, silverware and I think Barcelona deserve it. They have a very interesting um, communion of a team that's a mix of incredible, talented youngsters, fast-tracked into the uh, football's elite in, in, in the world and plus alongside with a number of veterans like Lewandowski, Busquets. So uh, I think this communion melt quite well. I'm not going to say super well we will be talking a little bit about barcelona's uh, future but they haven't been very reliable it's true that uh, i think we will remember this la liga for being very pragmatical from barcelona the one nil one nil one nil victories 11 record one nil victories for barcelona in uh, la liga season uh, it's a still a team far from being excellent they they still need one step uh, um, to be better in uh, physicality and, and especially it's a team that I think the starting 11 is great but then when they have injuries or something they have suffered that especially in Europe they they tend to be a little bit quicker but it's been a very interesting season I think they have uh, the, the main goal for them was winning La Liga Xavi knew that this was the key to to succeed to try to be regular and 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 to try to achieve that and and they did well and and they did in an interesting way with this mix of uh, things and I'm very surprised for the, especially for the defensive side and for for me the one of the keys is Mark andre Ter Stegen and probably Lewandowski even though after the World Cup his performances have uh, got a little bit lower. Yeah, absolutely. At the end of the day, as you said, orchestrated by Xavi Hernandez. Uh, of course, this means a lot as a legend of the club. And we know that they're still playing catch up with Real Madrid and those 35 La Liga titles. But when you think about this season, Rodri, and Gemma mentioned a couple of key players, of course, Marc Andre Ter Stegen, uh, the phenomenal addition that uh, Robert Lewandowski was considering, you know, his, his first part specifically of the season. Is there anybody else that comes to mind for you and, and this title that they were able to clinch? For me, Frankie de Jong. Everyone thought at the last uh, summer when the transfer that he was going to leave Barcelona. First of all, due to those financial problems the Barcelona uh, were facing and, and they needed to, to sell Frankie de Jong. And we've been saying during the past maybe 10 months that he was going to stay because he was really identified by the idea Barcelona was having on the pitch and he was for me a key player for, for Xavi because we could talk about maybe uh, Sergio Busquets that that for me he's the best midfielder on Barcelona history but this year this season we're gonna talk about Frankie de Jong where he was not on the pitch he was 
uh, really missed by his uh, coaches and by his teammates and I think he's like the, the perfect example of this Barcelona that has to grow a little bit more and he's young, he's talented, he's one of the of the main guys now to, to watch over the European football and I think that for me there is no one that could replace Frankie de Jong this season because he was so important for Barca that it's impossible to imagine he could be at that level for me because he's the one that balanced the defense that for me and um, maybe for us or for everyone is the the main line on this uh, on this success on this like La Liga trophy and he was the one to unite that defense with the attacking line so that's why uh, when you think about Barcelona uh, you always think about midfielders or strikers or defenders but when you have a guy like Frankie de Jong I think is uh, a luxury a yeah. luxury player for Barca and he's the one that has to be there in that position for 10 years yeah and that's why Manchester United wanted him so badly right it in that off season and that wind and that transfer window that we all expect that I thought he was going to be a red devil for the season and look at him now jumping up and down of course celebrating this title jumping up and down as Xavi Hernandez was of course we have to hear from the manager and we'll keep talking No no es la liga de Xavi no y no me hace sentir bien eh, escuchar que es la liga de Xavi es la liga del Barça no de un Barça que está creciendo de un Barça que está evolucionando de un Barça que está generando Casi, casi una nueva etapa, una nueva era, pero hay que seguir creciendo, ¿no? Creo que hemos hecho un gran trabajo de equipo, los jugadores han sido claves, vitales en todo esto, ¿no? Yo solo estoy aquí para ayudarles, para guiarles y para hacer grupo. Estábamos celebrando un trabajo de, de, de que empezó en julio y que, y que hemos sufrido muchísimo para conseguir esta liga. Yeah, and, and simply putting it, as of course, Xavi being from the institution, he says it, right, Gemma? I mean, it's it's not his title, uh, but it is Barcelona's title. But at the end of the day, he's such a big representation of what uh, historically this Barcelona side is, of course, because as a player, we're seeing how many titles he won. And of course, with this coach being Pep Guardiola, and as manager, he's already clinched this one. Um, so many expectations around Xavi Hernandez, doubts that he maybe had enough experience to take on this role and with such a complicated time that that the institution was living in. What does Xavi mean now, not only as a player, but now as a manager to these fans? Well, Xavi had a really tough job when he took uh, the charge uh, a year and a half ago because we're talking about a club that was absolutely mentally devastated that they were they were and are facing the worst economical uh, crisis and uh, there is like a big division in the institution as well and, and they are coming from very shameful uh, knockouts in Europe, 8-2 against Bayern Munich and all the other defeats that they have been suffering over and over uh, each uh, season in, in Europe. Uh, so he, what he did in the first uh, half season, actually his debut was in a Catalan Derby. He managed to, to win that uh, game against Espanol. Um, what he did is to recover the mentality, the winning mentality, and going step by step, uh, he... he he got the talent there, but you have to put it all together and, and try to recover pride. And in, in that, uh, he had to, to make the self-esteem of this team come back. And, and let's face it, uh, they have lost the, the big hero, Lionel Messi. So I think he, he I, I understand he doesn't want to give credit to himself, but I think he, he has a lot of uh, credit. And uh, even though, yes, he had uh, shiny signings at the beginning of the season with uh, of course, Lewandowski, Kunde, um, uh, Rafinha, but but it, it wasn't easy to recover that and to put all that pieces all together because there are missing pieces in, in that project. And we've seen that when they have had injuries, uh, he didn't have uh, quality replacements and he had to invent it. He invented, kind of invented the system with the four midfielders. When Pedro is not there, that invent doesn't work so well, but he managed to overcome that, uh, that in, in La Liga, which I think it's the most important trophy. The, the Champions League is very shiny, it's very glamorous, it gives you a, a lot of joy, but 
the La Liga, it's every weekend, every yeah. single weekend, every uh, sometimes twice per week, and and being constant there, competing well, I, I think there is a lot of great for because I think it's the base. Now let's see what happens next season, but the base to compete and and to fight, it's there in this Barcelona. Yeah, this like no longer feeling necessarily sorry for them. They have enough to compete, and they've shown it now. And Gemma mentioned, of course, Rodri. Uh, Lionel Messi, and I want to read what the Barcelona president had to say about it, Joan Laporta, and that possibility. We will do our best to bring Messi back to Barcelona. I've talked to Leo to somehow redirect the situation that occurred when I had put the club ahead of everything, even from him, the best player in the world. We've talked a lot about this. Uh, Rodri, what do you think of what Laporta is saying now about this? Well, I understand that they are trying hard to get Leo Messi back to Barcelona because it's the place where he belongs to. And I think it's the perfect combination when you talk about football. Uh, for me, Messi is the best uh, footballist of uh, all of, 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 of all times, you know, uh, about Pelé or Maradona. I think he's much, much better because he was at the same level. That is something unstoppable during so many years and I was so sad and I understand all the people, the Barca supporters that were really sad when he left two years ago, Football Club Barcelona, uh, and he'd had to sign for PSG. And, and when I see Leo Messi playing for PSG, it's like, what is he doing there? I mean, what is he doing in France, in PSG, when he always belonged to Football Club Barcelona? That is why I understand that, that Laporta is trying hard to get him back to Barcelona, because he's the, the natural place for the Argentinian. But at the same time, I understand that they are uh, making those efforts to bring Messi back, but at the same time, is like really really difficult because when you talk uh, about this movement to uh, football people I mean uh, sporting directors or coaches or players they all say the same like are they going to bring Leo Messi back to Barcelona for one or more or maybe two years I don't know um, but what Barca have to sacrifice for for that I mean uh, they need to sell maybe two, three big players to take Leo Messi back and to try to fix the numbers. And they will have to, to first of all, take out, uh, well, maybe Gemma would know a little bit more, but they, they have to clean like 150 or maybe 200 million of euros before that. And I know that this is really, really, really hard for for Football Club Barcelona. At the same time, I know that they are going to get a lot of millions through sponsorships if Leo Messi comes back to Barcelona. Yeah. But but I think it's really hard, you know. And I know that they are trying, but at the same time, it's like, I'm not going to say it's a dream impossible for, for La Porta, but I know that it's going to be really hard. And the pay that they will have to, or the price they have to pay, is going to be really high, not only about numbers or financial uh, operation but also you know when you have to sacrifice and sell some key players that are really young for, for the next five ten years. Gemma what do you think? So I think that Barca doesn't need Messi but they really want yeah. him because it's a way to restore a mistake um, a mistake they did two years ago now they are working on a viability plan to have Messi back it's tough it's hard um, they need um, to, to work it well with La Liga that they don't have the best relationship because uh, when you have numbers, there's a way to interpret that numbers. And when you talk about fair play, there are so many rules, so many different ways to, to, to read the number that sometimes it's, it's kind of hard. But the thing is that they, they will do whatever it takes to have Messi back. If he comes back, it's a big success. If not, it's a way to show their members that they did absolutely, absolutely everything to try to amend. It's true that two years ago was way more difficult because you cannot renew a player and pay him less than the half of the salary. That was impossible back then. Now he will be coming possibly with as a free agent and it's a way a little bit easier, not easy, but a little bit easier than two years ago. Um, Will Messi fit in that team? I think so. And I think so because Xavi, who knows better than this team, is Xavi. And he really thinks that Lionel Messi will fit in that four midfielder systems, that he would be useful. Um, they, they understand each other. They, they talk all the time. They have been talking all these years when, 
Xavi left to Qatar, he was still texting and having a weekly contact with Lionel Messi and they have been uh, friends or, or WhatsApp friends for during this time. So uh, there is a total understanding on that. They just need to to work on, on the numbers. And now we know, today we just found out that the, the relationship between Laporta and Messi is better than what we thought. We knew that he was talking with his father, father and agent, Jorge Messi, but Laporta never admitted mm. to, to have a... He said a lovely conversation that the, he talked to him when he won the World Cup and they have been chatting. So they will do whatever it takes. Uh, I think if you think uh, on Barcelona's future, it might not be necessary, as I was mentioning, but I think it's something nice. It's a way to, because football sometimes is not only sport, it's something uh, more than sport, more romantic. And I think it would be a really nice way. And also, we will be talking a little bit later on, on the next season for Barcelona. It's going to be really tough, not playing at the Camp Nou. And I think that if Messi goes to Munjuic, it's a big reason to bring the members and the supporters and the tourists there to, to be able to to enjoy a game with Lionel Messi. Yeah, I don't know why I'm imagining uh, Laporta and Xavi kind of editing the celebration videos yesterday and putting the Coldplay song that Pep Guardiola used to put for their squad. Uh, of course, for uh, mm. for those multiple championships, it was kind of the theme song of that whole year of success and sending mm. those videos to Leo Messi. Like, yeah. hey, remember? This is really fun. But I don't think, yeah, Messi needs, needs mm -hmm. that sort of convincing. Uh, as we say in Spanish, ganas no le faltan. Of course, we know that that he he really he really wants to that's not the issue here but of course as as we've talked about time and again and as you guys have detailed the economical situation is of course very very complicated but we'll of course uh be following every single step if it that road does lead to Lionel Messi coming back to Barcelona but there's still a lot that needs to happen around there and a lot that needs to happen still in this season of La Liga because uh, yeah, we do have to talk about Real Madrid still. They're more than alive in the Champions League. Uh, they were able to recover their second place, of course, this weekend after uh, that game that they had against Getafe. What's the mood uh, around this team, of course, with those 71 points, Rodri, and heading into what's a huge week, of course, in the Champions League? The mood, Chris, is that they only think about UEFA Champions League. They always been focused on that Manchester City tie against uh, you know the Sky Blues. So I mean, I'm not gonna say that they don't really care about La Liga anymore since maybe two, three weeks ago. But they are focused on on Europe because they think and they understand that the glory uh, or the path to the glory is the shortest way to to get through the through the Champions League. I mean, they did it really well on that game against Getafe, and believe me, that it was a tough game for Real Madrid because first of all, before the game. There were a lot of criticism around Real Madrid, around Carlo Ancelotti because of those rotations that we announced last week uh, due to those uh, games against Manchester City because uh, Ancelotti understood that the main priority now for Real Madrid are uh, those uh, two games against Manchester City, the one of last week and, and this Wednesday night game. So that is why he was going to rotate and a lot of players and a lot of coaches in La Liga said are Real Madrid going really to rotate that much? Uh, are they going to take Getafe, you know, like a red carpet to get a win in Santiago Bernabe when we know that this is something really tough for, for Getafe in normal situation? That is why it was a really tough game. They got the win. Uh, they suffer and they struggle during the game and, and we all know that when you are facing Getafe and now that Borla, uh, Bordalas took over Getafe's bench it's even more difficult because they close down on defense really really tight and they don't really give any big big spaces to, to the kind of team that Real Madrid are so that is why you know they won uh, we gotta give them credit for for that win and now they are focused again on that Manchester City game uh, the Etihad is gonna be really tough really hard but you know this is Real Madrid if you believe that Real Madrid can win uh, Manchester City you are right because no one is impossible in this competition for Real Madrid but the the truth is that they are focused only on that Man City game you know apart from 
protected back those or that second place of La Liga after Atletico Madrid failed on Elche. The, this is something that no one believed in, but Elche did it. Yeah. So, you know, congratulations to them. Yeah, absolutely. And listen, uh, Real Madrid at this moment, they're playing a chess game. And if you want uh, somebody very, very intelligent playing chess, Carlo Ancelotti is there. And so far, so good. He has a title already. He's in the Champions League semifinals. But yeah, this is a really big deal against Manchester City. Before we uh, keep talking about Real Madrid, Carlo Ancelotti, let's hear from the main man himself, the manager of Madrid. Lo que se ha quedado Guardiola es el calendario, que un calendario, como hemos dicho muchas veces, demasiado apretado. Nos ha tocado a nosotros jugar con menos de 72 horas la vuelta eh, de, una, de la semifinal. Ahora lo, los toca a él, al City jugar con menos descanso que nosotros. El, el calendario no es un calendario indicado y punto. No, no, no tengo nada que añadir. Demasiados partidos lo tenemos nosotros, lo tiene el City. Es verdad, para ellos era mejor jugar el sábado que no el domingo. Él tiene razón. Como nosotros se podía jugar el miércoles la semifinal de la, de la ida, ¿no? ¿Por qué hemos jugado al martes? Yo no lo sé. So there's two things here. Uh, I'm not surprised about the fact that these managers are talking about the calendar and how tight it's gotten, especially in the last few years, of course, around any league, then including, of course, the Premier League and now La Liga. And I'm not surprised uh, that, that we're seeing this as well, especially talking about these two big managers like Guardiola and like Ancelotti. I'm surprised that a Madrid manager is uh, agreeing with Pep Guardiola. But anyway, that's another uh, conversation. <laughs> what do you think uh, about how Ancelotti is approaching this situation now, Gemma? Well, I think Ancelotti has to say the message he was sending because uh, the press conference before the first uh, leg, he, he said absolutely the same as Guardiola said now because he was in that situation. They had to play Tuesday. They have just uh, uh, fight for a title, the Copa del Rey. So I think he, he could understand and support Guardiola because he said absolutely the same speech. And we've been talking about that, but Every year it's the same discussion. At the end of the season, there are a lot of uh, important games with a lot of things that can decide if a season is great or is a failure. And I understand managers, they, they, they think it's too much, it's crazy. If you add to that, that this year has been a, a World Cup year, it's absolutely crazy that Man City had to play uh, a capital game for the Premier League as they did away from home in, in Goodison Park and now uh, tomorrow they have to to fight uh, for for an, another uh, big game. So I I can understand his uh, his reason and and Guardiola being upset and and complaining. And I was very I'm very surprised about the ESPN index of the the ratings that the possibilities. I think because I think they are looking at numbers and I think that if Man City were playing about any other team in Europe in the Champions League, I would say that a 70-30 would be fair enough. But when you play against Real Madrid, they, I, I think the, the crest gives a lot. The 14 times champion gives you a lot of strength. And even though, um, if we talk about sport, the fact that Man City are very close to, to clinch the Premier League, which is an extremely competitive uh, league. Uh, they should be favourites. With Real Madrid, you, you never know. There is the memory of what happened last season. So we will see. I would give a number way closer. Maybe 55 for Man City, 45 for Real Madrid. Yeah, I was going to say 50-50. It's so hard to predict when any club faces Real Madrid in the Champions League. But I like your 55-45. Uh, Rodri, do you agree it's way closer than what we're seeing in the football index? Well, I would say 60% for Manchester City and 40% for uh, Real Madrid. I know that Man City are main favorites by far against Real Madrid. First of all, because they are going to play home. Secondly, because in the first uh, leg of this tie, Real Madrid didn't get the advantage that for me, Santiago Bernabeu is always for Real Madrid. And and the thing is that, you know, now Man City uh, plays, uh, you know, a lot of 
I mean, they played far better than Real Madrid. Uh, it, it looks sometimes that they play another game different than the rest of the teams because it's the, for me, Pep Guardiola, first of all, is the best coach in in the world now at the moment. And and secondly, because they have so many good, good uh, players like Kevin De Bruyne, like, for example, Holland, that is the best striker in the world, and they should go through. But I repeat again, when you are talking Real Madrid, playing on Champions League, you are talking about uh, a side like Real Madrid that made possible the impossible. Mm -hmm. And that is why you gotta be really aware of Real Madrid because the first guy that is always afraid of Real Madrid is one guy called Pep Guardiola. He knows perfectly what Real Madrid can do at the Champions League. So that is why he's always talking to the players in these last days like don't trust in Real Madrid. In the, the, in the moment that you are going back on, on, on the words, Real Madrid are gonna bite you because they smell the blood and they are gonna kill you in football ways. So that is why, I mean, it's gonna be a little bit tough, but, but you know, still, I think Man City should go through, you know, at least on the paper. Yeah, you think uh, the villain is down like in those scary movies and they're still, you know, with their hand out of the dirt and you just don't expect it. So this is always Real Madrid and whatever they're competing for. But of course, anything can happen this week when we talk about that level of Manchester City. As Gemma mentioned, they are more close than ever, especially after that Arsenal result this week and to clinching, of course, the Premier League. Guys, that takes us to our insider information. And Gemma, I'm going to start with you because I, I wanted to ask you right off the bat if you're all right after everything that happened yesterday. But take us through these bizarre and more than anything violent celebrations and the situation that you had to see for yourself. Yes, I was caught in the middle of the clash and it was violent, it was scary. It's probably one of the most scary situations I've been inside the pitch a football stadium. Not outside, sometimes I've seen clash of fans, ultras, and, and that's really bad as well. But inside, in, in, in the turf, I think I've never seen something so so scary with uh, because it was hundreds of uh, fans uh, trying to hurt Barcelona players and, and they were coming from anywhere. There were also battles. Usually, us, uh, the main broadcasters, we, we are inside the stadium when this is happening because we have to be there like five minutes before the, the, the game ends to, to do the interviews. But yesterday, you could smell that something was about to, to happen. It's true that uh, there were meetings before this game and police and both security teams uh, asked uh, Barcelona players not to celebrate. But we also kind of know, I mean, you have just clinch, uh, clinch a, a title, a, a huge one. It was the first La Liga for 15 of these players. So some kind of celebrations were about to happen. And it, it's not, uh, it's less than five minute celebrations. And then this clash, this awful uh, footage uh, started to happen. And, and, and it was really, it was quite scary. I, I decided not to get inside to the tunnel with the players because I, I thought I am not a player. I, I shouldn't be there. But then when, because there were a lot of fans trying to get in the tunnel to court Barcelona players, then the, all the police decided to go to that tunnel. And then I was like, I don't want to be left here in the football, in the pitch side with the violence. So then I decided to, to pretend I was a police and getting there. And then there was a lot of violent situations with the players of some players of Barcelona, like uh, Busquets or Araujo, were upset with the fact that they had to leave the pitch and couldn't celebrate anymore. And to tell you some, a, a couple of stories, one of these persons who jumped into the field and tried to hurt uh, the, the football players, he actually, he threw away one of the big, big cameras, the transmission cameras that uh, owned by Media Pro, the broadcasting company that does the football pitch. So that person, we have elections here in, in, in Barcelona, in uh, uh, local elections. Mm -hmm. So in two weekends, we will go to both. So one of the person, the person who threw that camera away, a big camera, he was a main candidate in a, a small town near where Cornella, the, where uh, football, uh, Spanish Stadium it is. So he was identified by the camera, so now he cannot be elected. He decided to withdraw. So this is one of the stories. Wow. Another one identified, he's the coach of a, a, team, a young team of Espanol. We'll see what happens with him. And let's see what happens with Espanol, because um, they are facing on Wednesday. We will know what is happening, but uh, they could be facing. They are fighting hard to avoid relegation. 
and they can have a, a fine and, and not being able to play at their stadium or at least some of the the, the, the places of the stadiums are going to are going to be empty so this is not helping a lot and just one last thing uh, today a former president Juan Cullet he he said that he was in the stadium and that uh, Barcelona provoked oh, that okay. maybe it's okay that they they had to do to make it shorter but he said no people were not complaining and then they were provoking that's not true and and the thing i have videos when they are celebrating from the very first second espanol supporters were violent and they wanted to 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 be doing something bad so it's a it's a really ugly picture i'm i'm really sorry i i really hope that espanol because i would like to have two teams in the first division in from barcelona but they are really they put themselves in a very difficult uh, position right now and and the the picture that they sell to the wall is a really a bad one yeah it doesn't help um not saying that the fans should have stayed and and clapped and celebrated this barcelona title and of course they're facing relegation it's such a tough situation but there's really no excuse and there's no room for violence and uh, as as reporters um i mean i've i've faced a, a scary situation as well in the in the liga mx and and i totally get that that scary side of it and it's crazy that we have to activate our fight or flight situation in, in our mm-hmm. mind and we shouldn't have to do that as sports reporters uh we should be there to just cover the fun and 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 the love of the game and and we shouldn't have to tell these scary stories but Jem I'm glad you're okay I'm glad it it, it didn't escalate yeah. to something uh, much worse but yeah it's it's a tough situation it's crazy that two people who should be really the example of leadership and of calmness in the chaos were causing the chaos themselves So uh thank you for telling us about uh, this whole situation because yeah I'm I'm shocked that that there's even more layers uh, to what happened yesterday. A politician there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come on guys. But oh man. <laughs> uh a- anyway, uh, he he'll probably get the ultras votes but yeah as you said probably uh, not uh, not going to run anymore. Uh Rodri, l- let's go to you. Uh, let's talk about um Madrid because of course we know that they're focused on what this Manchester City match uh, will be this coming Wednesday in the Champions League but they're freezing everything else until Thursday, correct? Yeah, that is why I told you that Real Madrid now are focus 100% on that game, away game against Manchester City in the UEFA Champions League semi-final. That is why Florentino wanted to frozen every operation, every talks, every 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 single detail till the till he knows where Real Madrid are going to play uh, from Thursday. If they are going to get to the final, if they get out of that Champions League, they don't want to to be uh, out of the path that Carlo Ancelotti made for for this week so they don't want to to get from Real Madrid any detail of the future regarding for example Jude Bellingham or regarding any renewals like Benzema like Modric like Toni Kroos they all only want to focus on that game against Manchester City because they understand that if there's any detail out of the sporting terms is going to is going to be bad for for the team so that is why till Thursday they don't want to move of any single finger on any uh, anything that is not football that is why um i wanted this morning to to talk to one of my sources at real madrid regarding jude bellingham because as we reported before in the last uh, two weeks uh, real madrid are again a little bit optimistic on getting jude bellingham for the next season but that is why my source at real madrid board told me like i'm not going to talk about this we got to be focused on that wednesday night game on we got to think about manchester city and after that call me on Thursday morning and I'll give you some more details if we are going to be a little bit nearer or closer to get Jude Bellingham for the next season but the, but the thing is that they are focused on that they are optimistic on Jude Bellingham for the next season to play on Real Madrid but they know that at the same time Manchester City are not going to throw the towel doesn't really matter who's going to be on the final yeah absolutely and, and, and there's just so much writing on this Champions League maybe for Carlo Ancelotti as we as we have discussed of course uh surrounding what his future could be next season but yeah the future of the club is on hold until they find out their fate on Wednesday in the Champions League semi-final uh back to you Gemma because of course uh we know that that there's work surrounding this new sports managing era 
There is a lot of work there. That's now the, the main deal that Barcelona needs to face. I'm going to tell you it's not going to start on today, on, on Monday, because they are doing the, the big parade with the open bus and doing the first uh, uh, champions uh, rule on the streets of Barcelona. So today it's going to be a very busy day. They celebrated yesterday. Um, I didn't give you the details of that. They, the staff and board of members celebrated in, in the posh place in the city centre, while the players and in, in, near, in the beach side. It was absolutely improvised. So I guess today after that uh, celebrations, there are going to be more dinners, more party. And at some point, when the hangover is over, uh, they will have to work on the on the new sports managing area. Because let's not forget that Matteo Alemán is uh, leaving the club at the end of the season, and that's a big deal. They have a lot of work to do. They need to to make a place in in the fair play financial situation to Gavi to register Araujo new contract to renew Balde, Lamin Yamal, and other way other. Uh, complicated operations. Of course, Lionel Messi will be the main target to, to take to, to Barcelona. And who's going to do that? We still don't know. Uh, we think at the end of the month, uh, um, this new sports managing area will be done. What we know right now is that Jordi Cruyff, who we can talk it was a number two or number three, depends on what you consider Laporta in that sports uh, decision making. He's taking a step in the side for now until Laporta and the board of members decides who is the, the leader of this area. Uh, there have been uh, talks with Deco. It's not closed yet. It's a, it's a strange situation because Deco is an agent and, for example, he's an agent of Rafinha, Barcelona player. So that's a, um, a, a complicated situation. Jordi Cruyff has a really good uh, relationship with the manager, with uh, Xavi. So it's a uh, key piece and Xavi wants him to, to stay. So um, there are talks that will start talking and trying to work on this situation because uh, Mateo Alemán, he has been a key piece for this new Barcelona under La, La Porta and he he's one of the strong men uh, when talking about numbers, when talking about uh, La Liga, but it's also true at the same time that maybe he was not that keen in, in doing strange operations, not thinking that much on the future and more with the heart, mm. for example, the, the Lionel Messi one. So it's uh, there's a big possibility that uh, Deco Porta uh, coming to take that area and doing things as the, the president wants to do, that his vision is for, for the best thing for the club for the future. Mm, interesting. Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, Deco last week, of course, and this possibility to see him back at the club now, of course, in a different area, although he's still uh, a little bit there with what you're telling us, Gemma. Thank you. Uh, back to you, Rodri, because there is some, uh, in Madrid, some worry about a uh, refereeing situation. Not only in Madrid, in the whole mm. La Liga. I was talking, you know, in the past days with a lot of members from, you know, the board of, of some big, big clubs in, in Spain, and they are really worried about the way the referees are acting in this season. And I'm not only talking about this final rush of the season, I'm talking about the whole year. And, and they are really worried about the level the Spain's federation are uh, leading to the referees because they don't really understand, first of all, the, the way they talk to the players. Secondly, they don't understand why Spanish referees, they, they act in one way here in Spain. And when they are in the Champions League or the Europe League, they are, you know, normal referees and they like, like they play in a different way in Europe rather than in Spain. They don't really understand that. They are really worried. They are maybe a little bit worried even more for, for the way they are interpreting the, the law, the, um, the law for, for, for the handballs inside the, the penalty area and they don't really understand why so many people, so many players are being sent off in Spain. If you compare Spain, La Liga with Premier League or with Italy, Serie A or Bundesliga, they don't really understand why here the referees are uh, showing more red cards to the players than in the rest of the continent. So that is why they are they're worried about that and they want the referees to change a little bit. They want to help the referees and, and they want the referees to be wide open to these kind of worries from Spanish clubs because they want to, to build 
uh, a better Spanish football, they want the football to be much better every single year and they understand in these clubs that La Liga referees are one step behind if you compare now the referees from the referees from maybe two, three years ago before the VAR. So that is why they they, they, they want to help and they, they try, they are going to change the way to, to, to talk in, in front of the cameras and the microphones for, for try to help the referees and try to improve something that they understand that has to be better for, for the next season. Yeah, so we can talk less about the referees after a match than we have been maybe this season. So the refs, they have to go to summer school. Yeah, sometimes you have to go through that to be a little bit better for the next school year or the next season, of course, uh, in football. Gemma, back to you because uh, there was a change of heart concerning the price of season tickets. Yeah, we've been talking in the past that uh, a lot of members were unhappy with uh, what's going to happen next season. Let's remember, come no under construction and they will move. Apparently, for only one season, we will see to the Olympic Stadium of uh, Montjuic. This is a much more uncomfortable stadium. It's in in, in a mountain in, in Montjuic and it's uh, there's no public transportation. There's no tube, no train. So it's uh, tough to get there and members won't be able able to go with the private cars because it's impossible to fit so many cars in a mountain so there are they are with the um, council of uh, Barcelona they are working on a, a plan to to get there and the thing is that uh, uh, what uh, Barcelona board of members have decided in the past is to to, to frozen the, the seasonal tickets and, and to put them open for any member and they were quite expensive. The first prices that they have published, they were quite expensive and there were a lot of members unhappy with this situation. They were preparing a, a committee to complain about that. And before this was happening, we just found out that uh, the board of members, Joan Laporta himself, is reconsidering that because the number of uh, members that have already been interested in getting that uh, season tickets, uh, let's uh, now there is like 83,000 uh, members with the, this, the possibility to get the season ticket, and uh, the demand it was uh, less than 7,000. So it's really nothing, nothing good for Barcelona, which are in an economic complicated situation so they are taking some time to evaluate this situation to try to offer a better price for for the members because uh, let's face it it's gonna be tough season next season for Barcelona it's a different stadium a smaller uh, the the fan base are, are gonna be less uh, crowded it's uh, the, the, the pub the fan base is gonna be far from the pitch so if this if we add this that it's gonna be winter there was gonna be rain uh, if the stadium is half empty, we can be facing really sad games for Barcelona playing at home as they were away from home. So they are reconsidering, trying to work on that. Of course, they are still looking for, for money. That's what they wanted. They wanted to make a lot of money with that. They have realized that uh, people might love Barcelona, but uh, they are not stupid and they like their <laughs> money. So they, they are trying to work to balance that, uh, that thing between making money and, and having the stadium full. Yeah, it's all about balance. They're trying to find it there at Barcelona, especially uh, with their fans. You can't drive them away, especially if you're the, the defending champs now of La Liga going into next season. Uh, Rodri, back to you because Getafe is looking for their future and maybe a new member on, on their bench. Who are they looking at? Yeah, they struggle a lot this season and they are still struggling because uh, Getafe is trying to avoid relegation and it's not easy for for the South Madrid side. Now we know that uh, Jose Bordalas took over Getafe bench uh, two weeks ago and they improved a little bit if you compare how Getafe is playing now the moment and how Getafe was playing when Kike Sanchez Flores was the coach. But the thing is that when Bordalas signed for Getafe said, okay, I'm going to try to help you in this last part of this season, but I'm not going to sign for next season. So, if Getafe doesn't really matter if they stay at Primera División or if they got relegated for Segunda División are looking for a coach just in case finally they are able to convince Jose Bordalas to stay one more year with Getafe. So, one of the guys that really like Getafe is 
Pacheta. Pacheta was the coach of Valladolid till one month and a half ago. He was replaced by Petzolano, that he's making a great great job in, in, in Valladolid, like the same that, that Pacheta made with with the same Ronaldo Nazario team. So that is why uh, he's one of the guys that really like Angel Torres, uh, president of Getafe. They are looking you know, deeply of what uh, Pacheta made at Valladolid, of what Pacheta made at Elche, the, and, and he's one of the guys that really like uh, Getafe. Let's see what happens. He's not the only candidate because uh, they know that there are going to be a lot of names on the table when they when the season is over. But Pacheta definitely is one of the guys that really like for uh, coaching Getafe next season for Angel Torres. All right, interesting. Yeah, trying to better that situation. Let's see if he is the right candidate looking forward to next season. And we're looking forward to some extra time now. Great stuff as always guys and your insider information uh we're going to talk a little bit more about barcelona because that hasn't been enough right but they deserve it they clinched the title uh but more than anything i, I want to know maybe if there's a funny story from the season or like a special moment that uh you guys remember Gemma, I'll, I'll start with you yeah, probably uh, I'm gonna say a funny moment and a sport I I important moment. And the sport one will be when they managed to win the La Liga del Clásico, the Camp Nou, because I think that day they clinched the, 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 the clinched the, the title, La Liga title, and they came from behind with that unlucky goal from Araujo on own goal um, and then Kessie, this player that he hasn't been maybe that shiny he was uh, had a lot of uh, controversy criticism uh, amongst the Barcelona fan base he managed to score that goal he made that celebration and I, I think it was <laughs> nice that he became the hero and that uh, Barcelona managed to, to win that day so um, I'm gonna say that day Barcelona cleans the title and I like the way they, they do with that underdog player we can call Frank Kessi like this that being important and then the other one it's a moment that didn't happen it's uh, the, the day that Gerard Piqué who has been a, a hero in, in Barcelona he decided to retire and I think he was wise because he have uh, because then after that everything the Shakira the all the songs everything <laughs> happened and he has avoided very uncomfortable situations because in any stadium and of course yesterday in the Catalan derby when Barcelona players uh, um, appeared in the pitch to do the warm up you know which song was uh, happening uh, singing uh. in the huge with a with a, a really big uh, speakers no. there it was the, the, the song that Shakira criticized us PK. So I think he kind of avoided being the second half of the season uh, with that. Uh, I mean, he wasn't there. He's probably the player in Barcelona that hates Espanol the, the best, I'm, uh, the most. I think he enjoyed so much yesterday at home on TV watching that game, that Espanol defeat. But he avoided being there with that huge, incomfortable situation. Yeah, that would have been... Uh, very awkward, to say the least. Uh, interesting, interesting uh, song of choice, and I'm almost 100% uh, sure, as of course, Gemma, you probably know that this was it was done on purpose, for sure, uh, to to get, of course, that that attention. Uh, Rodi, what what about you in this season with Barcelona? Well, I was thinking about the. Um, you, you you remember in the last Clásico in La Liga, last La Liga Clásico when when they gather shirt with the Motomami mm -hmm. with Rosalia logo. I think that, that was really funny because uh, I remember in the, I think it was in August, that a guy the, who who was working for Barcelona at the marketing the, the, uh, department, he told me that we're going to have these, these, these all along the, the season. And I was like, what Motomami is? And he was like, you don't know what Motomami is? <laughs> and I was like, no clue, man. I don't know who, what are you talking about? And he was like, you know who Rosalia is? And I was like, yeah, I think so. Come but on. I'm not really sure about who she is. And, and yeah, that was really fun because, you know, it was a breaking news that, that I got on my hands. But finally, it didn't come out because, <laughs> because I didn't know what Motomami was or who Rosalia was perfectly. No? So sorry for me. And the jersey is too expensive. I don't really like your music, but I respect you, okay? I respect you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was really funny because you talked about how expensive it was too, right? It was 400 euros? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the sign edition, the yeah. limited sign edition. I think it was even more, 500, something, something oh, like this. Wow. It was a crazy price. And and they run away so fast, like uh, like uh, some hour, a few oh, hours. Wow, they were gone. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I I really I really <laughs> liked it for for the record. I think the the sign is is great. She's ha she has it all over New York when when the album was going to come out. So of course I. I did know Rodri what um, what the movie was, but then again, I'm a fan of, of Rosalia. Um, I don't know my <laughs> my moment. Um, it was something that was very near and dear. You you guys know that I like Barcelona. I love I've loved their philosophy since I was 14, 15 years old. Um, I had the amazing opportunity to interview Robert Lewandowski and Gemma and Rodri. I mean, you, you guys have had interactions with him. He's such a nice human being. Uh, we talked about how he walked around New York before. Of course, we were, my, he was uh, getting mic'd up and I asked him about uh, what he thought about New York. And he was like, there's a lot of people, a lot of people. I really liked Soho though. <laughs> so uh, fun fact is that Robert Lewandowski likes Soho and he liked eating at Soho. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that, was, He's a that, nice that was a really, really cool moment. And that's something that I will cherish for a very, very long time. Of course, being able to interact with such a legend like Lewandowski was, and it was such a fun season. It's We're, we're not done yet. Of course, we are done with the La Liga champion. And of course, my favorite moment of the season, of the whole season, has been able to just react week after week, twice a week with both of you because it's been <laughs> such a fun season with both of you. Oh, the same for me, <laughs> same here. We love you guys. Uh, I, love, I love you guys too. I always <laughs> love to remind everybody who watches this, we want to thank you guys as well for an, a spectacular season here on La Liga Insiders. Like I said, we're not done yet, but we do have Uh, a champion. We'll have to see if we'll have another champion in the Champions League with Real Madrid in this big week that they have ahead. Gemma Soler, Rodrigo Faiz, you can follow both of them on their social media and you can watch all of the remaining La Liga matches on ESPN Plus and we'll be here in a few days. Gemma, Rodri, you guys are the best. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.